All right, good afternoon. Uh, with apologies for starting almost on time. I don't want to get anybody uh, confused here. Um, following my briefing, uh, Ambassador Kalskau, the permanent representative of Sweden, will be here uh, to brief you on the forthcoming UN Security Council retreat that is taking place in Sweden. And then after that, uh, don't leave, Brendan Varma will be here with you uh, to speak on behalf of the PGA, and he has some important announcements. Uh, speaking of important announcements, uh, just uh, the Secretary General will leave New York on Friday, April 20th, to conduct his annual retreat with Security Council hosted by Sweden, and that will be followed by state visit uh, to Sweden. Upon arrival, the Secretary General will hold his annual informal working uh, meeting with the Security Council under the presidency of Peru, and that will take place on Dag Hammarskjöld's estate in Bakora County, uh, Bakora in Skåne County, uh, in southern Sweden. And on Sunday, April 22nd, the Secretary General will give the annual Dag Hammarskjöld lecture in Uppsala in uh, Sweden. Following that, he will have bilateral consultations with the Prime Minister of Sweden before heading back to New York uh, that afternoon. Turning to Syria, in view of the current tensions, the UN Special Envoy for Syria, Staffan de Mistura, is undertaking intensive high-level consultations with the aim of proactively ascertaining the options for a meaningful relaunch of the UN-facilitated political process as called for in Security Council Resolution 2254. To this end, Mr. Dimistor attended the meetings of foreign ministers at the summit of the League of Arab States, where he had consultations with the Secretary General of the League of Arab States and the foreign ministers of Egypt, Jordan, and Iraq, among others, as well as the European Union High Representative, Federica Mogherini. The Special Envoy also attended the um, meetings of the Secretary General in Riyadh with His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, and the Foreign Minister. The Special Envoy is today in Ankara for meetings with senior Turkish officials. From there, he will proceed on to Moscow and Tehran for consultations with senior Russian and Iranian leaders. He, expressed, uh, he expects to consult with several European ministers and senior representatives of the United States and others on the 24th and 25th of April at the Brussels conference. He will then brief the Secretary General on the outcome of these consultations and in due course brief members of the Security Council. On the humanitarian side, our humanitarian colleagues uh, inform us that some 137,000 people remain displaced in Syria's Afrin district in the Tal, in Tal Rafat, Nabul, Zara, and Fafin areas as a result of hostilities and military operations that began on January 20th. In addition, 150,000 people remain inside Afrin district where access to people in need continues to be extremely limited. <clears throat> While the United Nations continues to provide assistance to the uh, people displaced from Afrin, the UN does not have direct regular access to the district, and humanitarian operations uh, in the area continue to face challenges, largely due to movement restrictions enforced by uh, actors on the ground. The sec the, in the af uh, yesterday afternoon, you will have seen that the Emergency Relief Coordinator, Mark Lowcock, briefed the Security Council, providing updates on Raqqa and other places. The emergency relief coordinator since, said that since Daesh was forced out of Raqqa in October, nearly 100,000 people have returned to the city. However, conditions are not conducive for returns due to the high level of unexploded ordinances and improvised in explosive devices contaminating the area, as well as widespread and severe infrastructural damage and lack of basic services. His briefing uh, was online and live. Yesterday afternoon, the Deputy Secretary General met on behalf of the Secretary General with the permanent representative of Ecuador to the United Nations, Ambassador Diego Moreron. The Deputy Secretary General reiterated the Secretary General's condemnation of the kidnapping and murder of three members of a media team near the Ecuadorian northern border with Colombia. The Deputy Secretary General conveyed the Secretary General's condolences to the families of the victims and expressed the United Nations solidarity with the people and government of Ecuador. And a uh, note from uh, Chad, um, 
Our humanitarian colleagues warn that the food and nutrition situation in Chad is alarming. In 2018, 4 million people are projected to be impacted by food insecurity, and more than 1.7 million people will need nutrition assistance in the country, including 200,000 cases of severe acute malnutrition among children under five. Chad ranked second in the 2017 Global Hunger Index, highlighting the extreme vulnerability of its population. This chronic crisis is accentuated by a deep economic and social crisis, intensifying agroclimate hazards due to climate change, which also impacts the most vulnerable population in the Sahel Belt, but also new areas such as Tangile. In 2018, $282.5 million is needed to save the lives of those most affected by food and nutrition crisis in Chad. A couple of agency updates for you. UNICEF said today that more than 200 children were released by armed groups in South Sudan yesterday. This was the second release of children in a series supported by UNICEF that will see almost 1,000 children released from the ranks of armed groups in the coming months. The 207 children, including 112 boys and 95 girls, were released from the ranks of the South Sudan National Liberation Movement and from the Sudan People's Liberation Army in opposition and took place in a rural community uh, called Bakwiri, about an hour's drive from Yambio in Western Equatoria State. During a ceremony, the children were formally disarmed and provided with civilian clothes. Medical screenings will now be carried out, and the children will receive counseling, psychosocial support as part of the reintegration program. Despite this progress, there are still some 19,000 children still serving in the ranks of armed forces and armed groups in South Sudan. And our colleagues at the Universal Postal Union and the International Narcotics Control Board signed, will, sign, will sign a cooperation agreement in Bern, Switzerland tomorrow on confronting illicit trafficking of synthetic opioids and other illicit drugs through, the post, through postal networks. Uh, to protect postal operators and to protect people's health in general, the two organizations will increase cooperation against trafficking and improve the detection and seizure of these substances. They will also share information on trends and patterns in drug movements. The agreement is driven by the epidemic and overdose deaths fueled by powerful fentanyl-related substances that can be 50 times deadlier than heroin. And I have a note today on dangerous hitchhikers carried out by global trade. These refer to plant pests and diseases, which when introduced into new environments can quickly take root and spread impacted food production and causing billions in economic damage and control costs. Our colleagues at the Food and Agriculture Organization in Rome tell us that the body charged with keeping global trade in plants and plant products safe has adopted several new, never heard this word before, phytosanitary standards. Uh, which I assume means standards dealing with plants. Um, these standards developed by the International Plant Protection Convention aim at preventing destructive agricultural and environmental pests from jumping borders and spreading internationally. One recent study in East Africa, for instance, found that just five invasive alien species could be causing as much as $1.1 billion in economic losses annually to smallholder farmers in the region. Press encounters tomorrow at 11 o'clock. There'll be a briefing here on indigenous women defending human uh, rights. Um, and the honor roll today, uh, we thank uh, Phnom Penh in Cambodia, which has paid its regular budget dues in full, which brings us up to? I think he was first. <laughs> Go ahead, Matthew. You win today. Not going to see it. <laughs> yeah, I know you're not going to yield. Okay, I did. I have not a number of things, yield, but there's yeah. one that seems pretty newsy. I wanted to ask you, it has, uh, since your last briefing, emerged that um, current CIA head, uh, nominee to State Department, Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, traveled to Pyongyang and met directly with Kim Jong-un. I'm wondering, I mean, you've had statements on other, mm -hmm. on other uh, breakthroughs. This, what do you think of this one? And also, the President, uh, Donald Trump, said that there's five locations being considered for the talks. None are in the U.S., mm -hmm. Maybe you will, or maybe you won't. Would the UN be willing to offer, for example, its premises in Geneva as a location for the upcoming uh, talks? Pompeo. The first. United Nations is um, is ready to support uh, this effort in whatever way uh, we can. I, I've seen the reports, uh, and we've read with interest uh, the different articles uh, that say uh, Mr. Pompeo was in uh, in Pyongyang. I have no way of confirming it. 
in general, the Secretary General is very supportive of all the diplomatic initiatives that are currently underway. Are you saying you doubt that he was there? I mean, the no, I'm not saying I doubt. I'm saying I have there. no. It's not for me to. I have no official uh, okay. comment. I've seen the, the press reports, okay. Madam. Thank you, Stefan. Yesterday, the um, SRSG Colin Stewart informed the Security Council that. Uh, Polisario refuses to meet him in Tindouf, Algeria, which has been the case for the last 20 years. Um, refuses to, to, to meet Minurso, um, uh, only meeting Minurso east of the Berm. Um, what do you think of that and what the, what's the position on the security? No, I have no, uh, the briefing was done in close consultation, so I have no particular information. I think the, the Secretary General's uh, report uh, is out, and I would refer you to that. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, uh, follow up to my questions from yesterday in regard of illegal guns and gun controls by UN. A few months ago, somebody with gun uh, walked into Parkland High School, and since then, a bunch of kids has changed the conversation of gun and gun control in US, which is the, one of the strongholds of Second Amendment. Why can UN pick up from there? And then I think the, the, the issue and, uh, of uh, the conventions uh, that exist uh, in the UN are, have to deal with international uh, trade. Uh, the issue of national legislation is one that needs to be addressed uh, nationally. Bottom line is a gun going to the wrong hands. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just stating our position. Yes, sir. Thank you. Stefan, uh, thank you. Can you clarify what happened in, in Douma with the DSS uh, advanced team uh, regarding the security situation in the area and whether uh, the uh, FFM um, sure. ultimately is going to uh, be able to a, do As you know, uh, the United Nations is supporting the mission uh, put together by the OPCW, uh, the fact-finding mission. One of the ways that we support them is through security. Uh, there was an advanced UN security team uh, that went into uh, Duma yesterday, as is standard practice for these high-risk missions, to see what the situation was like. While they were there, uh, they came under small arms uh, fire. There was also an explosive device that was detonated. Uh, none of the UN uh, staff were injured or hurt in any way. The team went back uh, to Damascus, and they, they got back to Damascus yesterday uh, safely. Uh, in, the, uh, in view of the above and further security arrangements to secure the site, an additional advanced security assessment visit are now required to enable the fact-finding mission uh, to do its work. Is it necessary to identify who was behind the uh, shots? Uh, I, I think, uh, and I, I'm not going to go on too much of a limb here, uh, the situation in Syria uh, and in Duma is still uh, is quite volatile. Uh, you come under... Uh, small arms fire, I think your first initial reaction is to leave. Um, there is still a lot of, uh, as I said, still a lot of volatility in the, um, in the area. Uh, we have no way of knowing uh, who shot at us. Edie. Sorry. A follow-up stuff. Mm -hmm. um, is there any indication of when this follow-up security assessment might take place? I think as soon as they feel, uh, as soon as practicable. Yep. Uh, another follow-up. You talked about volatility, um, and you said you don't know exactly who shot at them. But do you could you tell us it early too early to tell if they were targeted or simply got caught up in fire in the area. Listen, uh, they were shot at. Yeah. Go ahead. And so, I mean, I, I can't speak to the intent of those doing the firing. I can only speak from the perspective of those that were fired at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on firing and uh, arms, but in a different part of the world. Uh, there are reports that uh, uh, pol Polisario elements uh, in mid-May fired uh, warning shots at uh, Minorso observers to prevent them from uh, accessing an area east of the berm. I'm wondering what uh, Minorso reported on this. Uh, let me check. I have not seen anything on that. Can uh, I follow up on Syria? Mm -hmm. Please, go ahead. Uh, uh, 
just is there any <sighs> other um, uh, obstructions and are you worried uh, is the UN worried that the um, the evidence uh, in the area might disappear for well, some reason uh, you know I think the issues of substance of the mission best need addressed uh, to the OPCW we are supportive of the mission we would want I think everyone would want to see the mission get there as soon uh, as possible and we will do whatever we can on our part uh, to make that happen Nabil um, <clears throat> thank you so uh, was the the team uh, escorted by anyone by Syrian security forces or Russian uh, military uh, I, I'm not going to go into the details of who escorted them but they did have uh, they did have an escort and can can you tell us please about any damages in their cars or trucks no I'm not aware of any substantial uh, damage uh, I, I know no one was uh, no one from the UN team uh, was injured and from what I the information that I have they were able to leave in the vehicles that they came in so Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Stefan. Uh, you and United Nations officials who visit Myanmar uh, come back and make recommendations, proposals. My question is whether you ever hear any reaction to those uh, proposals? No, I think you, you, there was an extensive briefing yesterday by, uh, uh, by our humanitarian colleagues. Uh, they will, she will, I'm, as far as I understand, she will brief member states. And then we'll see, obviously, what uh, what happens. My question was: uh, yeah. Does Myanmar government react to those proposals? Uh, yeah. You know, that's a question to them. We've we've made our points. I think a large part of the international community has made its message clear, notably on the implementation of the Annan recommendations. Uh, the actions. We'll have to see what the actions are taken. Evelyn. Yes, on on the. Uh chemical weapons team, is there a timeline of how long they would be in the area? Do you have any idea? No, I think, again, that, are that, you that, sure they're in? Sorry? You, are you sure they're in? Uh, they're in Damascus. Uh, I think yes. the, the, the question is. Are they in, yeah, go ahead. No, they're in Damascus as soon uh, as, we, as the security permits it, they will go uh, to into Duma. How long they stay there, what they need to do, That's those are OPCW questions. Yes. Follow up on that, uh, Stefan. Uh, on a technical side, has your colleagues at OPCW shared with you how important time is in having more accurate investigation? It's, it's basic logic to anyone that time is of the essence when you are to inspect uh, a scene, uh, whether it's scene of a reported chemical weapons attack, whether it's a crime scene. Uh, it's basic, uh, I mean... I'm not a forensic expert, but it seems to be fairly basic. We are trying to do things as quickly as possible uh, to ensure that they get there as fast as possible within the, 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 the least restrictive security uh, environment. Yeah. Um, thank you, Stefan. Uh, following up on uh, Minur, so what does the SG think of the multiple recent threats against uh, UN peacekeepers such as uh, MINUSMA, MINUSCA, and um, MONUSCO? Thank the Secretary General, whether directly through statements or through himself, has uh, been extremely concerned uh, at the increased uh, targeting and death that we've seen in, uh, of peacekeepers. And we've seen it uh, throughout uh, peacekeeping missions. Uh, how to improve the safety of peacekeepers has to deal with both uh, the kind of equipment they get, the kind of training they get, the kind of mandates they are given by the Security Council. Uh, so it's it's a partnership really between the Secretariat, the Security Council, the troop contributing countries uh, to ensure that the uh, peacekeepers have the, the mandate they need, the tools they need, and the training they need to implement that mandate. Mr. Lee. Sure, I, uh, I wanted to ask you, the, the, in South Sudan, uh, the government has reportedly closed down uh, BBC radio mm -hmm, mm -hmm. relay stations in, wow, in Juba and Wow, and I wanted to know, one, if the mission what they think of that, and also if there's any update that you may have on the allegations of sexual exploitation by the Ghanaian contingent in WOW. It was announced with some fanfare that mm -hmm. Mr. Shearer had withdrawn them. What's the outcome of the investigation? Um, on, 
On the BBC, we're obviously concerned uh, about the reports of closing of relay stations uh, that are uh, that enable the BBC to be uh, to be broadcast. Uh, freedom of expression uh, must be the cornerstone of efforts to achieve peace and stability in a truly free and democratic uh, environment. On um, on South Sudan, uh, I don't believe I have an update uh, on the uh, on the unmiss, um, but I'll see what I can what I can. And also, I wanted to ask, given given the 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 other uh, um, Western Sahara questions, I wanted to ask you one. Here's one, and because you said, yeah, I guess you'll look into it. Or uh, Morocco seems to be claiming that both Bir Lahu and Tifer Idi are where the UN has team sites are located within the buffer zone. Frente Polisario says that's entirely false. Obviously, this is a dispute about where these meetings take place and whatever. What I wanted to know is it should be pretty straightforward for the UN to say, given how long it's had a mission there, are these two sites, Bir Lahu and Tiferiti, are they within the buffer zone, or as stated otherwise, are they not in the buffer zone? I, I, I don't have any new language on Western Sahar, so I'll get back to you. Mr. Barada. So on the uh, Security Council retreat in Stockholm, uh, is there a... It's uh, not in Stockholm. It's in Skåne County in southern Sweden. Okay, so it took a long time for me to figure out how to pronounce it properly. So that's good. That I don't want to let my training go to gonna, waste. You're gonna be uh, informing us yeah. about the uh, what is the uh, main subject that the uh, Secretary General is interested in uh, discussing. We know that the <coughs> Sweden uh, has some um, some plans. I think you know, some of it will do with. Uh, issues of, of peacekeeping and a lot of the political, uh, the, the, the current uh, hot spots uh, that the world is facing that are on the council's uh, agenda. Mr. Lee, and then we'll turn it over to my Swedish friends. Okay, I wanted to ask you, I've asked a couple times about this global service delivery mechanism, which sounds very dry, but would actually move 600 jobs out of New York to Mexico City. You know, I, uh, I apologize. I will have language for you on that. Even more uh, than language. I want to add an extra question before maybe, ah, this, maybe the language is already written. But there seems to be a question not only just about how the cities were selected, particularly Budapest, where in the past the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, in his former job, already moved jobs to yes, Budapest. Yes, yes. And I'm wondering, does he have any thoughts now that there are protests about Viktor Orban and the position on migration of moving more jobs to Hungary? I will get back to you on all of that. And, and has, how did, was it decided that four I, I cities was the right one? You. There seems to be a question about that. Ambassadors, these sites are all yours. 